We're going to review the braking and energy calculations. These are difficult calculations aimed towards the A to A star level um, of calculation work in physics um, unit 2. Um, we're provided with a range of formula that we should try and use but we should always try to substitute numbers into the calculations to show where our working came from. The first calculation is focusing on a change in momentum. <coughs> we should remember that momentum equals mass times velocity. And in the first question, an object is falling um, at 25 meters per second, but eventually it will land. And when it hits the surface, um, it will ultimately have a final velocity of zero meters per second. And we do have to infer that from the question. So we need to think about, if we're thinking about a change in velocity, then that will be m v, m times v, minus the initial momentum, which will be m u. The final velocity is zero, so for this part of the calculation, it will be 530 times zero. Take away <coughs> 530 um, multiplied by 25. This effectively is zero minus 13,250. So the answer is minus 13,250. Moving on to the next part of the question. Calculate the force acting. Well, we are told that force equals to the change in momentum divided by time. So we've already calculated the change in momentum here. So that's my, minus 13,250 divided by the time, which is 0 0.5 seconds for that change of momentum to happen. So that becomes 26,500. It's a minus because the momentum is decreasing <coughs> as the object slows down and hits the surface. Full marks for both. Okay, moving on to a uh, new question. Question two. In this situation, it's a, a car that breaks and comes to a stop. So a fairly typical question. Um, some building blocks to, to put in place here, a little bit of scaffolding to help us sort of get to the right answer. V, velocity of the car when it has stopped, will obviously be zero meters per second. The um, initial velocity, just as the car begins to brake, was 20 meters per second. So the braking force um, we would use the same formula as we just used above and this time force would equal and we know the mass is 1300 um, multiplied by zero take away 1300 multiplied by 20 and all of that is divided by the time which is 2.6 <clears throat> this part here is effectively zero, so it's going to be zero minus this value here, and we will end up with an answer that comes out as 10,000. It's force, so it is in newtons. It will be more accurately minus 10 because again the momentum is decreasing. Okay, so on to a new part of the question. The kinetic energy of the car as it starts to break is, we should remember that kinetic energy is calculated by half mv squared. So substituting in the numbers, half is a 0 0.5, multiplied by the mass, 1300, multiplied by 20 squared and that will provide us with an answer of 26,000 joules. Remember energy is precious and so are joules. But we want to use that energy uh, calculation to think about what was the distance travelled. Well we do know that work done or energy transferred equals force times distance. 
<coughs> we do need to rearrange that. And put that in terms of um, distance. So if we are calculating distance, distance equals energy divided by force, which equals we've calculated the energy 26,000 and we calculated the force in the first part of the question here, the breaking force of 10,000 minus 10,000 and that will give us an answer then of 26 meters which actually is a perfectly reasonable distance for breaking to happen um, you should always check to, to think whether that, that actual distance is a reasonable distance over which it would happen. The final part <coughs> of the final question, question three, is a little more tricky but it just focuses on you having to think about how much energy is in the system um, and how to get um, a distance out of that. So a tennis ball with a mass of 0.056 kilograms traveling at 50 meters per second hits a tennis racket. The strings of the racket stretch and stop the ball when it, is when it has moved a further 0.01 meters. Calculate the breaking, bre breaking force. So we're needing a force and we've got a distance. So automatically we should be thinking of the previous question where energy equals force times distance. Again if we rearrange that distance equals energy divided by force. I do apologize we're not after distance we are after force so it's force equals energy divided by distance. We're given a distance value. So what would the energy be? Well the energy transfer um, will be the kinetic energy that it has because of its movement and we've got all the information we need for that 0 0.056 kilograms and a velocity of 50 meters per second. So the E would be calculated or well, the energy or the kinetic energy equals half mv squared which equals 0 0.5 times the mass which is 0 0.056 times the velocity which is 50 squared and that equals 70 joules so we know that the energy value is 70 joules <coughs> so now we can use this value for this part of the calculation so the energy is 70 and we know that the distance is 0 0.01 meters and from that we get an answer that is 7,000 so the force is 7,000 newtons full marks <coughs>